One of the most difficult things to deal with in life is realizing you believe something that isn't true. Having your beliefs challenged and coming up with something that alters your worldview can either be enlightening or devastating. And when you realize something you believe in never existed at all, that can shake you to your very core. Or at least make for a really cool story. Number 10. Any particular shuffle of a deck of cards is statistically unlikely to have ever existed before. The United States playing card company sells 100 million decks of cards every year, and that's just one company. There's a safe bet that cards are the most popular gaming accessory in the world. They can be traced back to the 1300s in Europe, and the number of different card games a person can play is well into the thousands. With all those cards and all those games, one of the most surprising things about a deck of cards is not what they can do, but what they can't do. And statistically, Statistically speaking, what they can't do is ever be shuffled the same way twice. Although it's not impossible, though it is impossible to know one way or another, it is mathematically very unlikely that when you shuffle a deck, what you end up with in your hands has ever existed in the entire 700 year history of playing cards. There are factorial 52 ways to arrange a deck of playing cards during the shuffling process. That means after shuffling, there are 52 potential cards that could be on top of that deck. Flip it over, and now there are 51 potential cards that could be the second card, and so on down the line. Each of 52 cards could be the first, each of 51 could be the second, and so on. In the end, the total number of potential arrangements works out to a number that you probably don't want to try and give a name to, which is, well, I'm just going to display it on the screen now. It's insanely long. But in simpler terms, it's an 8 with 67 zeros after it. It's a big number. If everyone who ever lived spent their entire lives shuffling cards, we'd still never come close to shuffling all of the combinations. Number 9. Monastic vows of total silence don't really exist. Monks taking a vow of silence has been a staple of pop culture for a number of years. There's even a Buddhist monk in Hangover 2 who's played for laughs that doesn't speak. It's true that some devout monks or nuns may choose periods of silence, but no monastic order fully practices this. Moreover, when the individual monks do choose silence, it's not an all-encompassing and unbreakable practice. Instead, it involves choosing to speak with silence and becoming closer to their faith. Time is still set aside for conversations, typically at the end of the day. For the most part, the idea of a vow of silence is to prevent one from speaking without care. It allows for introspection and a better understanding of oneself. This can take place between designated prayer periods for several days or weeks at a time, or possibly longer if someone chooses. But it's not enforced, and it's also not expected. Plus, if something did need to be communicated, there would never be a reason not to share important information. Number 8. 10 days in 1582 never existed. If there's one thing most of us can count on always existing, it's time. Time marches on whether we pay attention to it or not. You go to sleep, you wake up eight hours later. The world kept spinning and it didn't care that you were not there to pay attention to it. This seems like something you can rely on. Unfortunately, though, you can't. Time as we understand it is a human concept. We created years and months and days and chopped them up with specific denominations. Because of that, we found ways to manipulate them, and never more noticeably than for ten very odd days back in the year 1582. In 1582, we adopted the Gregorian calendar, and herein we find a problem. The whole world was never united in its understanding of concepts like time, which is why you're here about the Chinese calendar and the Aztec calendar from time to time. Before the Gregorian calendar, we used the Julian calendar. The Julian calendar dated back to 46 BC when Julius Caesar introduced it, and it had problems. The length of a Julian year was 365.25 days, almost exactly the same as the Gregorian calendar. But almost doesn't count. After 1,600 years of having a slightly too long year, things had fallen out of sync, noticeably the equinoxes and solstices. The calendar was off by a day every 314 years, and so, when the Gregorian calendar took over, 10 days simply had to vanish. Number 7. Abraham and Moses probably never existed For about as long as the Bible has existed, people have wondered just how much of it is legit. Obviously, more people took the stories on faith back in the day, and folks in the modern world are less inclined to believe that Noah's Ark was a literal thing rather than an allegorical thing. That's not to say no one believes that, but it's a mixed bag these days, even among people who are generally Christian. That's why it's surprising to learn what scholars of the Bible consider to be entirely apocryphal, such as the story of Abraham and Noah, which is to say they believe neither of 
of those men were real people. Back in 2002, the United Synagogue of Conservative Judaism issued a new Torah and commentary that helped frame their beliefs in the context of history, archaeology, anthropology, and more. The information they shared traced the origins of many stories from Exodus to other sources and explained how Noah's Ark was likely borrowed from the Epic of Gilgamesh. And there was no anthropological evidence for the trek across Egypt or really anything from the entire book being true in a historical sense. Figures like King David, Abraham, Moses, Jacob, and King Solomon were likely just fictional according to Professor Thomas Thompson, one of the world's most prominent biblical scholars. This was based on his own 15 years of research into archaeological evidence surrounding much of what is detailed in the Old Testament. While the information no doubt shook the faith of some, rabbis and others have found ways to try and incorporate what is known with what is believed, as faith is really not the sort of thing that you need concrete evidence for all the time anyway. Most serious scholars and religious leaders have been well aware of these facts for years, but took time breaking it to their congregations and Believers. Number 6. Wild cows as we know them never existed. Most pet owners have looked at their dog or cat at some point and thought, how would you ever have made it in the wild? Domestic animals, of course, are not meant to make it in the wild. They're the result of generations of breeding for very specific traits that essentially make them unfit for living in the wild, and cows are no different. In fact, it's very unlikely cows would ever make it in the wild, because there have never really truly been wild cows. The animals we raise for beef today are descended from species like oxen and aurochs, the closest thing that's ever existed to a cow in the wild, but it's still not a cow. Domesticating cows from their wild cousins was a monumental task that was remarkably difficult. All the cattle that exist today, some 1.3 billion of them, descended from just 80 animals that domesticated 10,500 years ago. They were bred into a much tamer and easily manageable species. Number 5. Matriarchal societies have never existed. Search through social media these days and you'll see patriarchy mentioned very often. That's a society in which men are the dominant force. It implies that a matriarchy could also exist in which women are in charge. That definition is true and reasonable, but from a historical standpoint, it's entirely made up. Anthropologists have found no evidence that a true matriarchal society has ever existed. There has long been a belief that there was a time, often cited as 5,000 years in the past, when women were revealed and ruled before the idea of a patriarchy existed. But the evidence just doesn't bear that out. That's not to say there haven't been more egalitarian societies in the past and obviously instances of women rulers, but as an entire basis for society, it's never been done. Number four, ninjas were probably more like spies than assassins. Everyone knows ninjas, even if only in their mutant turtle form, cloaked in mysterious warriors of ancient Japan equipped with deadly weapons and inhuman stealth. They've been a pop culture staple for ages, but it turns out they were mostly born there too. It's not that ninjas never existed, but ninjas as we understand them likely didn't. The history of ninja is foggy at best, and there's a reason to believe that much of what we think we know about ninjas was tall tales, speculation, exaggeration, and supposition. What is known about them makes them sound less like stealthy assassins and more like ancient intelligence agents like old school CIA, who of course are also sometimes assassins. Number 3. True photographic memory has never been demonstrated to exist. Every so often you'll run across a movie in which a character claims to have a photographic memory. This quirk of biology seems super helpful and there have been people who have demonstrated an amazing recall in lab conditions. The guy who the movie Rain Man was based on had memorized over 9,000 books cover to cover. That said, photographic memory as depicted in fiction has never been demonstrated in real life. So how can someone memorize 9,000 books but not have a photographic memory, you might ask? Well, it comes down to how they remember things. Someone who can recite Pi to 67,890 digits like Lu Chao did is amazing, but he probably couldn't do it in reverse. And that matters because a true photographic memory would allow for that, to view any detail in any order at any time. You might think the difference is negligible, but it is a difference. Number 2. The authors of The Hardy Boys and Nancy Drew were made up. Both The Hardy Boys and the Nancy Drew series of novels are remarkably popular. Over 70 million Hardy Boys books have been sold. Nancy Drew can make the same claim. So you'd think that the authors, Franklin W. Dixon and Carolyn Keene respectively, would be pretty excited. Except neither one of them is a real person. Dixon and Keene are pen names used by a slew of writers. Both were made by Edward Stratemeyer in the 1920s, who created the names and assigned ideas he had come up with to other writers so they could develop them into whole books. It's a lot like the way content mills on the internet work today. Number 1. Magenta doesn't exist on the spectrum of visible light. Where on the rainbow would you find magenta? The answer is, of course, nowhere. And to some people, that means magenta as a color doesn't exist at all. Except you could also go and buy a magenta pencil crayon right now, so 
what exactly is going on. First, you can find magenta on a color wheel where red and purple come together. This doesn't happen on the light spectrum, though. That means magenta doesn't have a wavelength like other colors we recognize in a rainbow, but it does exist in a mix of wavelengths, and that's what our brain perceives when we look at magenta. That means our brain sort of fills in some gaps made by the way we perceive wavelengths of light with our eyes and gives us magenta. But in fairness, every color is constructed in our brain based on how light wavelengths are processed and interpreted, right? It's real insofar as any color is real, but it needs our brain to make it real.